Did you know the most important data in many generative AI models, such as ChatGPT, aren't even visible to us? The same sort of invisible data is used in some AI image generators. This invisible data is how these AI models understand complex patterns and generate realistic outputs. And here is a paradox. If we can't see these variables, how can we possibly use them? How do machines learn from something that isn't explicitly observed? And here's an even deeper question. What is the equivalent of this concept in physics? If you are interested to know, stay tuned. AI models process enormous amounts of data, but not all observed variables are equally useful. The challenge is transforming this high-dimensional information into a lower-dimensional form that's both meaningful and computationally efficient. And guess what? This isn't just a problem in AI. In physics also, we see the same idea in, for example, thermodynamics. Let me explain. Microscopic states, like the exact positions and momenta of individual particles, are not practically observable. Instead, we measure macroscopic quantities like temperature, pressure, and entropy, which emerge from statistical averaging over these hidden microscopic variables. Take temperature, for example. It's not a fundamental microscopic property, it's an emergent one. At the atomic level, molecules move at different speeds, each carrying a certain amount of kinetic energy. But we don't track every molecule. Instead, we measure the average kinetic energy of molecules in a system, and that's what we call temperature. In this sense, temperature is an observable feature, while the kinetic energy of each molecule is a latent variable, hidden but essential to the system. The only difference with AI is that, in this example, the number of hidden variables is more than the number of observed variables. Let me clarify the meaning of a latent variable through another example. Imagine you are on a bridge with a weight sensor that records every passing vehicle. You don't have a camera, so you can't see whether the vehicle is a truck or a motorcycle. But based on the weight patterns, you can infer what kinds of vehicles are crossing. This is exactly what machine learning models do. They use latent variables to infer hidden patterns. But this raises some questions. If AI models transform high-dimensional visible data to lower-dimensional invisible data, how do they decide which variables to keep? How do language models like ChatGPT or image models, based on GANs, use latent space to generate their output? And can we ever understand what is going on inside the latent space? Let's break it down step by step. First, let's distinguish feature space from latent space. Feature space consists of variables that we explicitly define and observe. Things like pixel values in an image, words in a language model, or sensor readings in a data set. These are the measurable aspects of data. But machine learning models often work with latent variables, hidden factors that can't be directly observed but are inferred from data. These latent variables encode deeper, underlying structures that drive patterns within the data. Just like in thermodynamics, where temperature emerges from the kinetic energy of molecules, latent variables in AI represent compressed, meaningful representations of the input data. Before we proceed, let's see what exactly is a space, when we talk about a feature or a latent space. Let me start with a known example. A particle in a container can be spotted by its x, y, and z coordinates. The x, y, and z variables define the position space of the particle. Now, imagine we have two particles in the container. Then, the position space has six dimensions. The x, y, and z of the first particle and the x, y, and z of the second particle. In the same way, we can define their velocity space. Each particle has a vector velocity with x, y, and z components. Therefore, the velocity space of two particles in a container is also six-dimensional. Mathematically speaking, a space is defined by the variables that describe each data point. Let's now see what is a feature space and what is a latent space. Think of it this way. Imagine we're organizing a massive library. Each book has multiple attributes, genre, author, and publication year. If we arrange books in a feature space, they might be grouped by visible traits like genre, author, and publication year. But in latent space, the model would cluster books by deeper, hidden relationships like thematic connections or writing style. 
This ability to map data into more meaningful spaces is fundamental to how AI models learn. But how does this process actually work? And how do models manipulate latent space to generate new text or new images? Let's dive in. At its core, latent space is a lower dimensional representation of data that retains only its most essential features. Instead of working with raw, high dimensional data, machine learning models map inputs to a latent space where similar data points are closer together. This transformation to a lower dimension allows models to analyze, interpret, and generate insights more efficiently. One way dimensionality reduction creates latent space is by compressing information. Consider a data set of handwritten digits, where each image consists of 784 pixels. Not every pixel is equally important in defining a digit, and most of those white pixels are redundant or insignificant details. In this case, we are looking to somehow generate latent variables from independent combinations of the important pixels. Each combination of the important pixels will be one latent variable. The way we combine these important pixels depends on the method we use. In a method like Principal Component Analysis, or PCA, the latent variables are linear combinations of the feature variables, which in this case are the pixels of the images. In other techniques like autoencoders, which we describe shortly, latent variables are built out of non-linear combinations of important pixels. Beyond compression, latent variables are more meaningful representations of data. In a face recognition model, for instance, raw pixel values do not explicitly encode high-level concepts like smiling or wearing glasses. However, when mapped to a well-structured latent space, these abstract characteristics become distinct and compact representations within a few latent variables. Reducing dimensions also improves computational efficiency. High-dimensional data is not only expensive to process, but also prone to overfitting, where a model memorizes noise rather than learning generalizable patterns. In the rest of this video, I'm going to review latent spaces in some of the most advanced AI models. Let's start by seeing how autoencoders use the latent space to learn efficient representations of data. Autoencoders are neural networks whose layers have a specific design aiming to compress input data into a lower dimensional form and then reconstruct it as accurately as possible. The key to this process is the latent space, also known as the bottleneck, which serves as a compressed representation of the original input. This latent space captures essential features while discarding unnecessary details, making it a fundamental component of autoencoder models. Autoencoders are trained to minimize the difference between the decoder's output and the original input. Since the encoder can transmit only a limited amount of information to the decoder, it is compelled to capture the most essential features of the data. As a result, the autoencoder naturally learns an efficient representation of the input data within the latent space. Once an autoencoder is trained, one can use it to reduce the dimensionality of new data by passing it to the encoder part and extracting the latent representation from the bottleneck layer. This transformation of original data to latent space has a non-linear nature, allowing the capture of complex patterns in the data. As the second example, let's now see how generative adversarial networks, or GANs, generate images using the latent space. At the heart of a GAN are two neural networks, the generator and the discriminator, which compete against each other in a process known as adversarial training. The generator's goal is to create images that resemble real ones, while the discriminator tries to distinguish between real and generated images. The generator starts with a random vector from a latent space. Initially, we guess the number of latent variables to be, for example, 64 or 128. At the end, we adjust this number to see how the performance of the model changes. Each latent variable is independently drawn from a normal probability distribution. And the combinations of all the randomly drawn latent variables define a vector in the latent space. The generator learns to transform this latent vector into an image through a series of neural network layers which progressively refine and reshape the data into something that resembles real-world images. The discriminator, on the other hand, evaluates whether an image is real or fake. If it correctly identifies a generated image as fake, the generator receives feedback and adjusts its parameters to produce more realistic images. 
Over multiple training iterations, this adversarial process leads the generator to capture meaningful patterns from the training data, mapping different regions of the latent space to different kinds of images. One of the fascinating aspects of this process is how the latent space encodes variations in image properties. By interpolating between different points in this space, one can smoothly transition from one generated image to another, revealing that the latent space captures underlying structures and features of the dataset. This property allows for controlled image synthesis, where specific aspects such as style, shape, or color can be manipulated by modifying the corresponding latent vectors. Ultimately, after extensive training, the generator becomes capable of producing high-quality images that are nearly indistinguishable from real ones. The latent space thus acts as the creative foundation from which the generator constructs diverse and realistic visual content. Let's now see how large language models or LLMs use latent space to generate new text. The process begins with training on vast amounts of text data, where the model learns statistical relationships between words, their contexts, and their meanings. Instead of storing explicit rules about language, the model compresses this information into a structured, multi-dimensional space, where each point represents a unique aspect of meaning. Similar words and phrases cluster together in this space, capturing nuances like synonyms, analogies, and even abstract concepts. Next, another latent space is created through neural network layers, particularly the transformer architecture, which maps input text into dense numerical representations called embeddings. These embeddings are not arbitrary, but are structured such that relationships between words emerge naturally based on their co-occurrence and usage patterns in the training data. During training, the model refines this space using optimization techniques, adjusting millions or even billions of parameters to minimize the error in predicting words and their contexts. Beyond individual words, models like GPT generate contextual embeddings, meaning that the same word can have different representations based on its sentence. For instance, the word bank in I deposited money at the bank represents a financial institution, whereas in I sat by the riverbank, it refers to a geographical location. Once this latent space is established, text generation becomes a process of navigating it. When given a prompt, the model converts it into an embedding, which acts as a starting point in the latent space. Using attention mechanisms and deep network layers, the model explores nearby regions, predicting the most probable next words by following patterns it has learned. Each word it generates updates the embedding, moving through the latent space in a way that maintains coherence and context. One of the challenges of working with latent spaces is to interpret them. But before I discuss that, let me quickly mention our workshop series. A great data scientist combines a deep understanding of concepts with plenty of hands-on experience. That's why I'm excited to invite you to our upcoming hands-on workshops, where we'll solve real-world data science and machine learning problems together. If you are interested, all the details for registration are in the description below. Okay, back to our subject. Interpretation of the latent spaces, especially the nonlinear ones, is quite challenging and not fully addressed. Here, to help us understand the concepts of the latent space, I'm going to discuss the latent space created using the linear transformation of the principal component analysis, or PCA, which is fully understood. In principal component analysis, or PCA, the relationship between the feature space and the latent space is established through a linear transformation. Given a dataset with some number of columns, PCA transforms the dataset into a new dataset such that the first column has the highest variance and the last column has the least variance. This particular arrangement of columns has a special feature. The covariance matrix of the dataset in this new representation is diagonal. The reason the first few principal components are the most significant latent variables is that they capture the greatest amount of variance in the dataset. Since variance represents the spread of data and the amount of information present, retaining only the top few principal components effectively reduces dimensionality while preserving most of the structure in the data. Unfortunately, the latent space defined by PCA 
is among a few that we fully understand. As the complexity of the latent spaces increases, our understanding of them decreases. At this point, one might ask, why do we need to understand latent spaces? Because they are foundation of how AI learns, generalizes, and generates. If we ever want to control the output of these models, we might end up with just one solution, understand them, or build them such that we can easily interpret the entire process that leads to the generation of their output. Now comes another question. How can we begin to uncover latent spaces? Right now, we don't have a clear answer. There are many ongoing studies. But one approach that I feel might work is inspired by landau ginzburg theory in physics, a method used to understand highly nonlinear phenomena of phase transitions by systematically constructing an underlying probabilistic landscape. If we could develop a similar framework for AI, we might finally gain insight into how models make decisions, how they encode knowledge, and how we can make them truly interpretable. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.